Hey, welcome back. So let's look at our folder structure here. So I have this uh, folder, my blog in HD Docs. Okay, so what I want to do is open up my text editor here. So I'll close all the files that are in here. I don't need them. So I'm using Sublime Text as the text editor and you can use any text editor of your choice. You can use Notepad as well, it's okay. However, it's better to use something like Sublime Text because it has some extra perks. And by the way, you can download Sublime Text for free online. All right, so if we are back here in our htdocs folder, all I want to do is now grab the my blog folder. Okay, my blog, that's the copy, and drag it to Sublime Text and drop it there. So now at least we have a folder structure here which we can see inside and then we can click on files to see what they contain okay so i'm going to try and explain what these folders files and folders are but before i do that let me explain the mvc format first so that you can understand what's going on here so the thing is let me create a new file here now mvc of course start uh, stands for model view controller Okay, now what exactly does this mean? This means we, this is a style in which when you're creating your website, you separate your models, your views, and your controllers. Now, why would one want to do this? Now, the reason we do this is so that the view, which is the HTML of your, um, your website, is separate from the actual logic that makes your website function. The reason this is a good thing is because in case you want to change the way your website looks like, you're not going to have to deal with PHP code inside your view. Because for example, normally what will happen is somebody will have some HTML here, okay, maybe uh, a break tag here or something like that. But then inside there, they will have some PHP tags and then they will have some uh, PHP uh, logic in there, like so. So the PHP logic and the HTML are combined together. Now the problem with this is if you want to change the view of your how your website looks like, you will have to make sure that you don't erase any PHP logic in there, which can become quite tedious. However, if you use the model view controller system, your views are separate from your controllers and your models. And one, when those are separate, it means I can easily replace the view file and still maintain the functionality of my website because most of the functionality is inside the model or the controller. Okay, so this is why this is good. So the MVC is just a way of separating files, separate because of what they do. The models are separate, and now you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a controller or a model? A view is just the HTML file, that's it. But a model is usually a class file. It's a class file that uh, connects to the uh, database. So this is a model. So the model is usually the file you use to connect to the uh, database and read data from there or save data to the database. So this is what a model does. So we separate, we create a separate file just for doing that, connecting to the, in, uh, to the database and reading and writing to the database. So that's a model. And then there's a controller that uh, determines what the app should do. This one is the controller, of course. So the controller determines what the app should do. Now app here is the website itself, but because websites have become so complex nowadays, we just call them web apps. Okay, so the controller determines what the app should do. This controller is the one that tells which model to do what exactly. So it's the one that's responsible for calling a particular model to do something. Okay, and then the same controller, once it's done uh, receiving data from the model, it's going to send that data to a view just so the user can see it and display it. 
and then if the user sends some data for example they try to sign up they send some data the controller will get that data decide which model must handle that data and then give it that data once the model is done handling that it will get the result and the controller will send that result to the view so this is the dynamic of these things the controller decides which model does what and then once the model is finished working with the data the resulting data there is sent to the view now as much as this is what happens in mvc it's not always true it depends on how you design your mvc because there are many different styles of mvc of mvc some mvc styles do not even have models and sometimes you can even skip the controller depending on how you structure your thing. So as we do more in here, you're going to understand this MVC format a little bit better. All right, so with that lengthy uh, explanation, let me show you what's inside these files anyway to help explain the MVC format. So here, as you can see, it's not every folder that you need to know what is in there. Some folders are not really necessary for you as a beginner. There are only a few things you need to know. Let's say, for example, Artisan. This one, you never need to, uh, to actually edit it or do anything like that. Because this one is just a helper file that will help you do certain things like creating controllers, creating models, and so on. So we'll see how we use that. Now the composer.json, this is the file that contains all the uh, dependencies that were created by composer. So composer is the one that wrote this to tell it what, um, this is a composer file. So composer will read this file when, uh, if, if in case you want to update your dependencies, it's going to read this file look it over and see okay this uh, project depends on this it depends on that it depends on that. and then it's going to download all that and then put all that it has downloaded inside the vendor folder so all this vendor folder here is is meant for composer to add the dependencies of this whole project so same same with uh, composer.log these work together with composer and uh, there's a package manager, package JSON here, same thing. So you ignore all these files, they are comp uh, you, you won't need to be using them. However, the .env file here, you may need to add some things like database connection here, okay? So you could add your database connection uh, uh, variables here if you want to. Or if you don't do that, there are other files in the config, for example, where you can actually do that. So I'd rather you do it in the config and do not touch the env file for now. Okay, so here we have a folder at the top here called app. Now app contains all the critical uh, files here uh, that it needs to run, which is, like, for example, the kernel. This is the, these are the main files for the app and exceptions. And then there's uh, HTTP here. So the folder that you need to beware of inside app here is the HTTP folder, because this one contains the controllers. So we have a controller, the main controller here, and then it also contains the middleware here. So we're going to learn how what all these actually do. So already you can see there are controllers, and then. Uh, let's go and look for models. So. So keep, uh, keep note of HTTP here. This is the only folder you need to keep note of here. The others you can ignore. And then here, if we go to Bootstrap, Bootstrap is the app uh, file that is responsible for, uh, this is what is loaded uh, by default here uh, for the view, because this is Bootstrap here. So. It's responsible for the view and then there are config files here so here you have a lot of configurations you can do for example there's the app name here you can change this app name to from laravel to something that uh, is more familiar to what you're doing for example here we are doing a blog so we will put my blog here 
So all these files here about configuring. So if you want to configure the, ma the mailing system, this is where you go. The queue, the services, you want to configure the session, this is where you go. You want to configure how the view functions. Uh, this is where you would do it. For example, if you want to change the path that the views are in, you can edit it here. But we're not going to be editing any of these anytime soon. All these hashing, so everything in here is for configuration. So we may come back to this folder from time to time to configure a few things. Uh, same thing with uh, database here. This is where your migrations will be stored. We're going to learn what migrations are and so on. So don't mind this folder here. So, so far, the only folder you should mind is the HTTP as mentioned there. And then the second folder is the public folder here. If you look at that, there's the index page in there. This is the page that is load, but loaded by default. So when you, whenever you open, um, uh, what is this? Uh, whenever you open Laravel, this is the uh, file that is loaded first. So after this is loaded, it loads all the files that are required in the auto load here. And then here it loads the bootstrap app there. And then it loads the rest of the kernel here. Okay, so that, let's look at the web config. Okay, this one we can ignore for now. So that index.php there. And then the other folder is resources. So resources is where you add your JavaScript files in here and then your SAS files, language files here, there's only one language, English, but most importantly, this is where all the views will dis, uh, reside. So for example, there's this welcome.blade.php there. Okay, so I'll come back to this in a moment, this welcome.blade, and then there's routes here. So this is also a very important folder, especially the web.php there because this is where we're going to create all our routing files and we're going to learn what routing is. So just keep in mind that we'll be coming back to this file very often. Okay, so for now, this is all you need to learn. So keep in mind, it's just the web.php, this views folder here, and then the, even though I've told you about the index.php, uh, we're never going to be editing anything in here at all. So then the other thing we look at is the config folder where we may configure a few things here. And then we go to the app and HTTP where we're going to be putting our controllers here. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, what it is here. So let's do a little test so that we see if actually our installation was correct. Okay, so go to your Let's go to our browser here. Now, keep in mind that the folder we are in here is, um, wait a minute, is my blog. So my blog is inside C, ZAMP, htdocs, my blog, and this is it here, okay? So my blog, and then there's public there. So this is the, uh, the file that will be loaded first, but let's just do up to my blog there. So let me come back to here. I will go to an empty thingy here and say localhost and then I will go to my blog like that, hit enter and then of course I have to go to my public folder, click. Okay, so now once you click here you see this Laravel here, this means that everything went well in your installation. So as long as you can see this, congratulations, you've installed Laravel correctly. So you'll be asking yourself, how exactly do we edit this? Well, that's what we're going to see in the next video, how to actually edit this. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.